Hello, this talk is about uh, GeoShape components. If you want more information about GeoShape, please visit geoshape.org. Let's uh, first bring up uh, the geoshape.org page. Um, this is where uh, you can find all kinds of information uh, about GeoShape, uh, but more importantly, I will be able to uh, go to the live uh, server or live demo uh, for the purposes of uh, this particular video. So um, we have uh, an instance of GeoShape up at demo.geoshape.org. You don't really have to use this instance. Uh, you can uh, easily create an instance that fully runs uh, in a VM on your own machine and you don't have to get to the internet. But nevertheless, this is what we're going to use for now. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and log out here first. Uh, when you first uh, come to the site, this is what you'll get. Uh, you'll be on this login screen and um, you, if you already have an account, fantastic. But if you don't, you can uh, simply click on register uh, to sign up as a new user to play around with GeoShape. And if you have your own installation, um, you know, it might, you know, you don't necessarily have to let others uh, register with that instance. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And um, so this is the landing page for GeoShape. GeoShape, it's a platform, it's not one particular uh, uh, application. It's a collection of different applications that come together uh, to uh, create a geospatial platform. Uh, it has a web component, it also has a mobile component, and uh, we'll talk about the different aspects of it. So what you're looking at right now, uh, the web application you're actually looking at right now is called GeoNode. Um, even though it's the, the user-facing component of GeoShape, the app web application itself, it's, it's GeoNode. GeoNode right now has 41 different layers, 19 different maps, and 70 different users for this particular instance uh, that we're looking at right now. Uh, GeoNode, it's essentially um, an application that uh, manages both your geospatial data and also your users. It does more, but these are the uh, some of the more important uh, functionalities of, uh, of, of GeoNode. Um, so let's go ahead and I will go to the uh, layers page. You can see a lot of different layers here. And uh, let's go ahead and um, I can actually go to maps. And uh, let's go ahead and create a, uh, an open existing map for that matter. So now we are still in the GeoNode web application. However, we have opened uh, the Maploom uh, web editor. Maploom uh, allows you to um, edit, both view and edit your geospatial data without having to have a, a desktop application. And um, Maploom is not a, an editor that comes uh, with GeoNode by default. Um, we have developed uh, Maploom and uh, when you install GeoShape, we automatically configure it to use uh, this web editor, um, which is uh, which is very it's, it's currently the most uh, powerful uh, web editor that uh, also has GeoGit capabilities, which will uh, which will show you. So we're now in Maplin. Maplin, you can um, it's it's essentially for viewing and editing a map. So I, for example, here on the left hand side, you can see that we have three different layers. Uh, you can easily bring layers in from the current server or even other remote servers, add them to your map and so forth. And uh, let's go ahead and pull up some information on this particular map. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll click on a feature here. Uh, let's zoom in more. That way we'll click on the individual one. You see that this particular feature um, has a photo associated with it, and you have a list of different properties. Um, that have been filled out. Uh, note that uh, this particular feature on the map was actually created from a mobile device uh, called Arbiter, which is also part of the uh, GeoShape platform. So if I open up at the emulator here to show you, this is looking at the same spot on the map with the same three features or four features uh, there. And if uh, from the mobile device, you can actually create a new feature and uh, you can 
actually fill out the different uh, information about the uh, particular feature. And on an actual mobile device, uh, you can use the camera uh, to take an actual photo uh, and attach it uh, to the feature. And from there, uh, you're actually able to then synchronize. Uh, you can you're about you're you're able to synchronize this feature, which pushes it uh, to the server. And uh, all right. Okay, and here we could, you could see this particular feature is the one that I just added on the mobile device, Arbor. Now, uh, one of the strengths of uh, GeoShape is the ability to view history of both features and layers in general. I'm going to click this history button, and this history button uh, now shows all the changes. First of all, it shows who made it and how long ago, it was two, uh, in 2014 it was uh, created and it's been edited several times since. Uh, first of all, it's been uh, synced, but also it's been um, it, it edited a bunch of times uh, since it was uh, originally created. And uh, the functionality here, the history functionality, it's provided uh, on the back end by a component that's called GeoGig. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. So, so far we've talked about GeoNote, the web application, and also Maploom which is the web uh, editing client. Um, so now GeoNode, uh, or, Geo, or Maplin for that matter, uh, they, uh, they don't actually uh, contain the geos uh, geospatial data or serve out the actual geospatial data. There's another component that sits behind all of this uh, that's called GeoServer. So if I go to GeoServer, um, okay, take two. Uh, if I go to GeoServer here, you'll see that uh, we have all our layers um, in this server. Um, if I click on um, the la layers here, in fact, I can actually click on review one of the layers we're looking at. Um, so if I click on this layer, this is the layer we're actually just viewing in Maplin. As you can see, GeoServer itself uh, this is a very minimal uh, viewer and uh, doesn't uh, allow you to do a whole lot of things here, which is why you don't, which is why you want a, uh, you want GeoServer, for example, uh, coupled with a web, with a web client uh, or web editor. And um, coming back to GeoServer, um, GeoServer actually even supports importing data. So you can upload data to it. However, uh, you can only upload data that's already on the server. You can't upload data that's on your computer. Um, and uh, this is one of the main reasons why we want to use GeoNode um, to uh, actually upload, uh, upload the data. So I can go back here um, to GeoNode. I can show you where you would upload a layer. So if I go to Layers, I can just say Upload Layer. And from here, you can actually browse for files on your computer. Um, and the data not having to actually be on the server already. Um, so uh, it has an importer, um, but it's not something uh, terribly user-friendly that you'd end up using. Um, looking at the things that GeoServer does, uh, GeoServer um, actually has um, data stores. Let's take a quick look at data stores. Uh, you could see here that uh, this server that's serving that data to GeoNode and then allows Maplin to use them as well, uh, has a, a few GeoGig data stores and also a Postgres data store. Um, let's go ahead and try to add a new store, a data store real quick. This uh, view shows you all the different data stores available um, that's already supported um, when, you, you have, when you install um, a GeoShip. So your data, your geospatial data, your point lines and polygons that are coupled with a bunch of attributes, um, they can be stored in a simple comma-separated uh, values file, um, but that's not terribly efficient, um, so or performant either for that matter. Uh, so usually uh, your best option is, or the default option on what GeoNode does by default, is to store all your geospatial data in a PostGIS 
uh, database. PostGIS is an uh, open source database that, uh, that's um, you know, highly reliable and scalable for that matter. Um, and also, I, I made mentions of GeoGig earlier, this is a different data store uh, where you can uh, choose to store your data as well. Um, a lot of you guys uh, probably use geo uh, I'm sorry, geo <laughs> or shape files for that matter, and uh, you can uh, actually have the server store your shape files as a shape file. File again, similar to CSVs, that wouldn't necessarily be an optimal way to uh, save uh, your data or store your data for access. Um, Post just would be probably a pre uh, the preferred way you want to go with. But this is the idea of different vector data or different data sources uh, and data stores for that matter you could use to store your geospatial data uh, and bring in your geospatial data from. In addition to your vector data, GeoServer can actually serve out um, you can serve out raster data and GeoServer does uh, has a lot of different capabilities uh, for example it, it can cache your data um, and uh, it's actually a very um, it's a it's an open source juice you know, server that serves that geospatial data, uh, which is actually highly compliant with jo uh, OGC standards. As you can see, uh, it supports WMS. WMS is Web Map Service. When you use WMS, uh, you can essentially we get uh, you, we can ask GeoServer to give us a rendered tile or image uh, using uh, different uh, geospatial data styling, etc. Uh, WFS, which is Web Feature Service, uh, it allows you to retrieve the actual data uh, as opposed to an image. WMS for image, WFS actually gives you the actual data that makes up a feature uh, or a point on a map. For example, uh, for example a, a point on a map might be a hospital. A particular hospital that let's say is close to your house, that would be a point with the coordinates of that hospital and a lot of different attributes build out for it. Using WFS you can retrieve that specific information. And um, uh, WCS is Web Coverage Service. Web Coverage Service allows you to um, essentially retrieve your rasters. Uh, the, when we're talking about, at, when we're looking at data stores, um, talked about your uh, data format and, uh, or, or your data uh, or raster data sources for that matter. And uh, you can use WCS to retrieve uh, that data. WPS is Web Processing Service. Uh, when you want to perform certain operations or uh, computational pro uh, operations, for that matter, on your uh, geospatial data, you can use uh, WPS and, and so forth. So um, let's go back to, let's go back here. And let's do a quick review. So we talked about GeoNode. It's your, uh, you, you know, it's the user-facing, the main user-facing application that users see when um, they interact with uh, GeoShape. And uh, GeoNode has MapBloom configured inside of it as the, the uh, default web, um, you know, web client. And uh, then we talked about uh, GeoServer which is the application that does all the work behind the scene for actually serving out the data. Um, and GeoServer uses data stores behind it um, to store data and actually bring out uh, and serve out data. Uh, different examples of data stores are uh, PostGIS again. Um, it's, it's the one that you should probably be using by default. But you can use shapefile data stores, you could use GeoGig, and, um, and so forth. And different ones have different strengths. For example, GeoGig, it's, uh, 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 GeoGig actually allows you to uh, keep track of the history of all your changes uh, or modifications to your geospatial, uh, to, uh, your vector geospatial data, whereas uh, PostGIS. Um, it's just for viewing your current state of your geospatial data, and uh, it's it doesn't keep track of the history, but at the same time it performs uh, better when you compare it to GeoGig. Uh, but then, so you have to kind of choose which data stores are best fit for what you're trying to do uh, at the time. So, all right, thanks for watching this video, and uh, please let us know if you have any questions.
feel free to email us. Thank you very much.